move, he could change some of the larger properties, we can't find anyone to move into, in high notes. So we actually have four people living in a larger property, a single person, out of benefit, seven family. Now, entry costs. You can move people out of the private sector, that could save about a million pounds. So, you actually end up with a cost <coughs> overall of one million pounds extra in housing benefit to what it is now. One million pounds extra in housing benefit. And that's just snapping fingers. All that's done is a mathematical calculation of how we make social housing more efficient. It doesn't take account of how we got 3,300 in the private sector. It doesn't take into account that people are going to have to move, 5,500 people are going to have to move, children have got to move to schools, people have got to move out to their communities, neighbours have got to lose their friends, everything. It's just tough finger making more efficient. So, but how do you do all that? I mean, at the moment, the uh, Nottingham City Homes are spending about half a million pounds extra in trying to collect the money at the moment. But if they wanted to start moving people, which they are trying to, for people who actually want to move, when there is proper distribution, it should cost an extra £12 million pounds from housing associations and from Nottingham City Homes to actually help people move. It's about £2,700 2, £2, per move. That's how much it costs to do the first in the social sector. So you multiply that by the number moving and you get £12 million. Pounds. And to help people in the private sector, we've got 3,300 moving into the private sector, we need to help them find places. Currently, it costs about £500 pounds to move a person into the private sector. That's another 1.75 million. So here's the costs, no value to it, all the costs. So in order to make savings in this system and make housing, social housing more efficient, it's costing a million pounds in extra housing benefit, it's costing housing providers 12 million pounds, money that could be used to build some more houses, for instance, built to actually help <coughs> Uh, with improving houses, and it's going to cost as uh, £40 million for the public purse, and of course it's £1.2 million that the City Council has to find through the Housing End Department to actually pay for moving those people. So all of that actually, uh, that's going to be taken from whatever, we we'll have to actually put that under pressure next year on saving, because that's what we're going to do. Of course, we're not going to do like that. Because people, it doesn't work that way. But what we've actually got is a stupid system that's written on the back of a fire packet somewhere. They still have fire packets in the toy part for a cigar packet. And they to penalise the poorest in our community. And to actually say it's got to be like this because. We've got a similar system in the private sector is rubbish because we haven't got a similar system in the private sector in any case. What the Tories have tried to do is lay one group of poor people against another group of poor people. So I think we should be stopping the madness of this obviously inefficient, obviously expensive, and let's call on the government to repeal it. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Lindsay. Is that separate? Councillor Collins. Thank you, Lord Mayor. There are two million households in England on housing waiting lists, and 250,000 families living in overcrowded accommodation. Here in Nottingham, some 9,000 households are affected by the changes to this benefit, while some 30,000 households are on the waiting list for accommodation. Nearly one third of working age social housing tenants on housing benefits are living in accommodation
that is too big for their needs. That equates to nearly a million spare rooms currently being paid for by the taxpayer and denying hundreds of thousands of people the chance to adequately house their family. Hard-working taxpayers have to make tough choices of their own about what sort of property they can afford to live in. And they should not be paying for what is effectively a benefit subsidy for empty rooms. Housing benefits in the private sector only covers the rooms that people need. The extra rooms must be paid for by the individual tenant. Since the 1st of April this year, housing benefit entitlement for working age tenants in the social rental sector reflects household size as well. Tenants are now expected to make a contribution towards the rent if they are living in accommodation which is larger than they need, in the same way that housing benefit claimants living in the private sector do. This is not an additional tax in the way that the workplace parking level is here in Thank you. 